We're now live. We're good? Yes. We're live? Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Live in the Wellness Garden. I am your garden coordinator, Andreas. And I'm Brianna, the garden manager assistant. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a couple things, actually. Um, spring is on its way. Only a couple days now. Ooh. Really excited for spring, and it's actually time for us to start really transitioning. Um, so I have already begun uh, sowing our spring crops. Uh, if you come over here, we'll take a look. Out of the way. Um, so I actually uh, put, sowed beans here two weeks ago. You can see them coming up right now. Mm -hmm. um, this bean variety is called Provider. It's a bush bean. And what that means is that it'll grow into like a bush habit and it'll, it won't vine. Um, so it's great uh, for growing in a square foot garden if you don't have any kind of support because uh, this bush beans don't need any support. They're freestanding. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about succession planting. Um, and uh, we'll be succession planting here and in another bed over there. Uh, and uh, the idea is, is basically uh, to um, stagger your planting. So we're planting one square every two weeks so that we get a continuous harvest of mm -hmm. beans. Um, we will also be talking about how to apply worm tea. Uh, which we made, and we talked about how to make worm tea uh, during the last uh, live. Uh, Brianna yes. went ahead and uh, whipped up a batch. This is my first, first batch. batch. I know, I was like nervous, you but did a great it's, job. it's uh, easy, you guys. It's so easy. <laughs> and we're going to use this as a foliar spray um, to uh, spray down the fruit trees and some of the veggies uh, and uh, the passion fruit. Um, and then whatever we don't use, uh, we're going to actually be dumping onto the passion fruit. Uh, so, yes. this has been brewing for two days. Uh, that's a good amount of time uh, to brew this time of year. I would say two days. When it gets a bit warmer, leave it for one day. Uh, because mm -hmm. when the temperatures are warmer, the uh, bacteria and fungi in there will multiply more rapidly. And you don't want to leave it for too long because then they can start to die. Um, so yeah, we'll be talking about that. And uh, bonus content, uh, we'll be doing uh, some chop and drop uh, in this bed right here. Uh, so. Um, Chop and drop is a great way uh, to skip the composting process altogether mm -hmm. and just return the nutrients directly to the soil. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing here. Uh, so the idea is basically we're going to cut all these down, peel back the wood chips, uh, save them for later, um, and then we're going to literally just chop everything up finely and lay it on top of the surface evenly uh, and then cover it up with some extra soil and then uh, when we sow uh, our cover crops here, we'll replace the wood chips again, um, or at least some of them. Just just enough to cover the soil, um, but not so much as to uh, make it difficult for the cover crop seeds to germinate, because we want them to be able to germinate. Are we going to leave our, um, are they nasturtiums? No. Uh, we'll, we'll take the nasturtiums down. Nasturtiums? Too. Really? Uh, yeah, um, we have more nasturtiums coming up around the garden, so okay. they'll, they'll grow. Nasturtiums do grow in the winter here quite well. Uh, that's one of the advantages of living in a mild climate. You can have things flowering year round. Um, and obviously the best season for pollinators is going to be spring, summer, fall. Um, you can see that this broccoli has bolted. There, is, there are aphids all over it right now. And so this stuff has to go, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and it is growing. It is providing food for the bees, our friends. Uh, so that's not a problem. Uh, but we want it to get out of here. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that's what we'll be talking about today, uh, but I know first uh, we have some questions that were submitted to us. Um, so uh, do you want to bring those up, Brianna? Oh, yes. The questions regarding up. succession planting. Is your phone still on 1% or is it charging? It's still on 1%, but Alondra, I sent them to Alondra. Okay. Maybe yeah. as yeah, we're, right. as, as so we're succession. Ask the questions for us. Yes, as we're uh, as, as we're doing the live. Uh, so I suppose we'll just get started. Um, yeah. And see, here's the other great thing about worm tea, and this is another reason why we made it. We use it to treat seeds uh, before planting to get the beneficial biology on them. Um, this is what we did with a lot of our seeds, and, and we've been having really good results. If you can see these cover crops over here, and just kind of tender cover boy. Um, these are going to get terminated very soon, but not yet. Uh, and we'll talk about how to do that. You said uh, right before they flower, or right as they're before like they... pretty much, you know, when they're just starting to set seed is when you want to terminate. And you can see the hairy vetch here is, is flowering. Um, the Austrian field pea has begun flowering. Very beautiful flower. 
Um, and uh, I can see that the brassicas that are in here, uh, this one right here, I'm not sure which one this is, but it's starting to produce flowers. Um, and mm -hmm. the grass is uh, two different types of wheat. We'll see if the wheat flowers are, and starts producing seed heads. Um, honestly, like, you know, I don't feel like we need to wait for the wheat as much. Uh, it might be a good idea. Um, the thing about grasses like wheat is that they are highly mycorrhizal. Uh, and what that means is that they are really good host plants for this type of beneficial fungi called mm -hmm. mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, what they essentially do is, is they infect the roots of the plants um, and then they send out like their fungal strands, their hyphae into the soil to help the plants access nutrients and water. And so when the grasses that host these fungi start maturing, start producing seed, it sends a signal to these mycorrhizal fungi to produce spores. And so in an ideal situation, we want to have the grass uh, mature and we want to terminate everything right before it starts going to seed. Um, cause that'll uh, allow us to, um, uh, obtain maximal benefit for these cover crops. But if we can't, that's fine. The seedlings that are supposed to go in this bed are already germinating. We don't want them to go for too long, uh, mm -hmm. in the containers, um, in my nursery at home. Uh, so we may have to terminate these a little bit early and that's okay. Uh, the ones over here, uh, we could leave for a little bit longer. Um, they're not quite flowering yet. Okay. We have a question. Yes. Which crops are ideal for succession planting? Beans are fantastic for succession planting. Leafy yes. greens are fantastic for succession planting. Root crops are fantastic for succession planting. So anything, um, except not for anything. trees. So like <laughs> trees, no. Um, right. Uh, eggplants, no. Tomatoes, no. So because eggplants oh. and tomatoes, or at least um, uh, indeterminate tomatoes, the vine types, they pro each plant will produce continuously. So um, with each mm. kind, with with kinds of crops that produce continuously after they reach a certain stage in their life, there's no point in succession planting. Succession planting is for crops that will produce either all at once uh -huh. or for a short window and then be done. Uh, so that's why you want to stagger it out so that you get a harvest, a continuous harvest, because you harvest, yeah. like, let's say you're planting carrots, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you plant carrots, you know, in a different few different spaces a week apart. So that way, uh, every week you'll get to pull carrots out of the ground. You yes. Know? But if you're growing peas, for example, you know, the, these peas right here that Brianna planted that are looking over, by the way, um, these peas right here, these peas keep putting on pods and they keep producing flowers. Right. So there's no point in succession planting peas because once peas start producing, they will keep producing until the end of the season. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. I think you explained them already because another question was what's the benefit and purpose of succession planting? Yes, that answers that question too. Are these the questions Alondra has for mm -hmm. us? Great. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do it? Um, and uh, as the questions come up, uh, we can answer them mm -hmm. um, as we're going along. I need to get the supplies. Okay. Um, so uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, be the star of the show as well, uh, yeah. then uh, you can go ahead. I'm just going to get everything ready. Okay. I will go to the peas. I feel like this is my favorite section of the garden here because again i planted these peas with like little expectation because i wasn't sure how old the seeds were but they're looking beautiful what are you guys planting at home if you plant anything feel free to share it in the comments because i have a little home garden myself and i love knowing what other people are planting What things do you need to consider when you're succession planting? Um, I would say the things you need to consider are the placement. The question was what things you need to consider when you're succession planting. Placement is a good one. So like where placement. do you want your harvest to be and where, where, where should you plant this crop in relation to your other crops? That's important. Because mm -hmm. we did um, that with the carrots, right? I'm trying to see where were the first this is not succession planted really. I mean, this was all planted at once, and then right. that was planted. These carrots, as you can okay, see, are just Okay, and they're coming barely up. coming up here. They're very tiny, you can't um, really see, but these ones were before. Yep, this, this soil needs some love. Uh, so we're gonna be planting lots of beans. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it looks like this bean made its way over here. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. We'll, we'll throw it on the ground and see if it takes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, so 
Okay. Uh, I guess I can finish answering that question. Um, what other things to consider with succession planting? Uh, consider uh, the harvest window. And what that is, is the amount of time you get to harvest the plant. Uh, so for carrots, it's all at once. So you only get to harvest once. Um, so um, if you want to get, you know, a week of carrot harvests, you know, then you like, it, it, you could do it on a weekly basis for something like carrots. Um, for beans, uh, with bush beans, what you'll normally get is you'll uh, harvest for two to three weeks. Uh, so space them two to three weeks apart. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to start pulling these out. And then we're going to demonstrate how to treat seeds using worm tape and uh, inoculant. It's really important, uh, if, especially if you're starting a new garden, that you use an inoculant when you're planting legumes like beans and peas. Um, so what I'm going to do first is this is going to be the spot. So I'm just going to kind of like scoot the mulch aside really briefly um, so that we can do, drill some proper planting holes. My goodness, look at all those ants. I wonder what they're up to. And there's worms here too. It's always good to see worms. And this soil looks pretty good. Uh, there's some sticks buried here, but this is pretty good soil. Mm -hmm. Notice the aggregation. You see how it's like little clumps, these tiny little clumps? That's good. Uh, for, for garden soil at least, you know. Um, if you're growing a native soil, you want it to be more like um, a, sort of like a chocolate cake or, or like cottage cheese texture. Well, that's kind of like the ideal. But this is pretty good for garden soil. Because it's just like so high in compost you don't, and not like much minerals. Um, I learned today that this is 50% uh, like soil mix from the store and 50% native soil that was brought in for someone, from somewhere else. Um, I always recommend including some native soil in your raised beds uh, uh, that you know is not contaminated mm -hmm. uh, because native soil contains lots of minerals uh, that your plants can use for a very long time. Um, provided you are, you know, doing proper planting practices and, and crop rotations and stuff and cover crops and stuff to, to free the minerals up again. It's important stuff. Um, so yeah, we cleared the spot. And uh, next I'm going to make nine holes. Because with square foot gardening, that's what we're doing here. It is nine, bean, nine bush bean plants per square foot. Look at that nifty tool you have. Yeah, I've always been a... Digger finger person. <laughs> Just put my finger to make the hole. But that's a cool tool. They that's have so many tool. tools nowadays. And now that it's getting warmer, all of our seeds are going to germinate faster. Oh, we have an exciting update. update. I want to share the update about the um, our irrigation. Oh yes, please do. Okay, so uh, we now have a automatic irrigation system so that's that's exciting so we won't have to manually turn on the system here but it'll come on on a certain time every day right yep for 30 7 minutes every day for 30 minutes is what we're starting with thank you to ruben at the kind folks at, at, and the kind folks at ppm for helping us get this installed yay shout out to you guys you're awesome <laughs> ppm is a physical plant management <laughs> yes okay so um we got these ready uh let's go over here now um okay because we're also going to be doing it over here. Uh, so um, these beds right here, we're doing what's called a poly. We're going to be doing what's called a polyculture. Um, so I already planted beans uh, in these spaces right here. Okay. Um, so and there are one, two, three, four, five, six beds we're polyculturing in. So um, polyculture is when you plant uh, multiple plants together that uh, I was gonna ask them. that I'm like what's polyculture yeah it's it's when you plant multiple plants together that, that are able to work together or benefit each other mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna be doing uh, beans and peppers and beans and eggplants right here is gonna be beans and eggplants Ooh, I just started uh, pepper seeds at home and they're doing well fantastic the pepper seeds yes. that we have for, for our garden are doing pretty well too unfortunately the really hot pepper seeds that I got uh, from a friend did not germinate. Um, so oh, maybe really? what we can do instead is go to Garu peppers. Um, I actually ordered some seed recently. Um, and what gochu Garu peppers are is uh, they're Korean red peppers that are used hmm. in, in like uh, um, chili kimchi? flakes, like oh. Korean chili flakes to make kimchi in, in the gochu Garu. Mm. Um, or are they called gochu peppers? I don't remember exactly. I'm obviously not Korean, so I'm probably <laughs> getting this very wrong, but I do like kimchi. <laughs> so yes, kimchi. The first time I tried it, it was so good. It had so much like flavor to things. 
Does succession planting require a lot of space? I don't nope. think so. Not necessarily. Not. I mean, you could do succession planting in here. Like, if you wanted to do all beans in this two foot by two foot bed, you could do a four week rotation in here just fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we'll be, here we'll be, we'll be pairing them with eggplants. And then, you know, once eggplants start producing, they will keep producing all season long. So there's no point. We're just going to plant those out all at once. I have a variety of eggplants at home. They're circle eggplant. Like, I don't know. I forgot what the name of the variety Spore is. Plants. But instead of, like, the regular banana shape, it's a circle. Like, they're circles. Oh, the banana shape ones are the, Jap are the Japanese eggplants. Oh, okay. Those are the ones you commonly find in stores, right? A lot of the times. Japanese. Yeah, but these ones at home, they're circle, so... It's perfect for those eggplant pizzas. Here's a hairy vetch that came up as a volunteer. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snap it at ground level. And then uh, leave the roots in the ground and mm. leave the... Uh, Leave the green part on top. That's your chop and drop there. Yep, little chop and drop. <laughs> it's a preview of what we'll be doing. Man, there are so many worms in these beds. That's what I like to see. That's exciting. Worms are really good at helping to structure soil properly. So what are the ants? I'm trying to, I remember you explained this before, like what the ants. Ooh, there's even a spider in there. Awesome. Um, see these aphids right here? Oh yeah. So ants will actually farm these. And uh, they will bring them to new plants and uh, protect them from predators. And in exchange, uh, the ants will, will eat the honeydew that aphids produce. It's like a, a sweet liquid that they excrete from their rear end. Mm -hmm. um, and the ants love it. So, like, it's that's an example of a symbiotic relationship. When two different organisms uh, live together and, and, you know, they, they like share some kind of, of like um, a bond in terms of the functions. Um, this is an example of mutualistic symbiosis, which is where both organisms benefit from the arrangement. Uh, and we can learn from that, and uh, we want to uh, so simulate then, that in our gardens. Uh, we, we want plants that will benefit each other. So the uh, ants are not a good sign then. Yeah, the ants are not good. <laughs> right. Like a good kind. But, I mean, in a if way... If someone has ants in their garden, should they try to terminate them? In a, exterminate or them? Exterminate them? Uh, I would say, and this is totally philosophical, I would say keep your plants healthy and mm. because what pests do that's a sign will, of unhealthy they will plants. target the plants that are unhealthy right and so um if you're having lots of pest issues uh then that's a sign <laughs> that for some reason you know something that you're doing is not right and you're not like creating a healthy environment for the plants mm -hmm. and it's it's like the best thing you could do instead of trying to kill them is figure out what the problem is and figure out how you can get the plants to be healthy because Healthy plants don't have pest problems. And sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes it's just the end of the season. And it's hot, and the plants are stressed out. And when it's hot, lots of pests will reproduce very quickly. And so it just becomes a problem sometimes when it's like hot out. And that just might be your sign, okay, it's time to start, you know, taking these plants out and planting new crops, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you can use control under some situations like that, where it's like something that's out of your control. It's not a bad thing. Uh, just be very careful about what kind you use, because the worst thing that you could possibly do uh, is is also is kill everything. Is is use a pesticide and kill everything, because not only will that kill the pests, it'll kill the beneficials that feed on the pests, and the pests reproduce more quickly than the beneficials. Uh, so um, next year, when you have pests again there will be no beneficial insects to control them. And then you'll have to apply more pesticide and the problem gets worse. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, all right, I think it's time to treat the seeds. We have all of our holes drilled. These are the providers. Oh, they look like red beans. Yeah, they, they dry to that color, but um. You could, I like to eat them when they're tender and, and green. Mm. So um, I like to do two per hole. And so we made three plots, nine, nine plants holes. per plot, two plants per hole. 18. So 18 plants per plot times three is 54. 54 seeds. One, two, four, 
Oops. <laughs> Four. Six. Eight. Ten. Twelve. Sixteen. Twenty. Is succession planting and companion planting okay. the same? Nope. No, succession is when, uh, what we talked about earlier, like planting yeah. for a continuous harvest, so spacing out the time that you plant, so that way you can, once that vegetable or green, or um, vegetable gives its um, harvest, then you have something coming up next right after. Companion planting is more so, um, there, I've seen a lot of different charts online and it shows which plants grow best yeah. with which plants Actually, because there's some plants that don't don't grow well which I never understood that though like why certain plants don't grow well with other plants but I don't know do you know yes um what's the reason sometimes it's just like the the plant's physical shape mm. um like for example uh one one combination you shouldn't grow together are peppers and pole beans. Pole beans are the types of beans that make vines. Mm -hmm. um, and what will happen is the pole beans will climb up the peppers and choke them out. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. But for example, if you have corn and pole beans, the corn grows real tall real fast, and then the beans can just twine up it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just kind of depends. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so we have our seeds. Uh, so what we're going to do... not gonna let you want to keep this stuff out of direct sunlight as much as possible because this is these are bacterial cultures you don't want them to you know you just need a little pinch you don't want them to be in direct sunlight it's not good for them we'll kill them in fact you know i might have already damaged this stuff too much so we'll see if it even works I'll, I'll know if it works i'll be able to check for nodules and i'll be able to see like um if the plants are doing okay but yeah so what you want to do now Take a tiny amount of the worm tea. Just put it in there. Throw it around. You coat them. I coat them evenly. Now these are inoculated. And we germinate. The uh, rhizobia bacteria that allow for the nitrogen fixation will immediately germinate as well and colonize the seeds so that we can pick them. Up. So. Oopsies. I keep stepping on these. <laughs> oh, the little thumbtacks? Yep. One. I remember the other day you were telling me about them. Um, it's crazy how much different, uh, like in just that little teaspoon or tablespoon of worm tea is like so much bacteria in there. So yep. much good bacteria. Good like bacteria. you don't need too much to... You don't need a little, a lot at all. yeah, a little will take you a long way. It's not a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I always thought it was a fertilizer. Yeah, people, that's that, that's how we're taught to garden. You know, you add nutrients to the soil by adding fertilizers. But how it really works in nature is the bacteria and the fungi make the nutrients available. The bacteria and fungi fertilize the plants. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we never have to go out into a forest and add fertilizer. This that's make so sense. true. So that's how we want our gardens to be. We want them to be, ideally, at least in life. You know. um, mm -hmm. We don't want to have to add fertilizer ever. Um, in some cases, it's it's necessary, but um, if we're taking an approach that focuses on soil health and you know proper like nutrient cycling, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to. It may take some time to get to that point if you're just getting into it, but eventually you should. Uh, there are farmers who don't use fertilizer at all. And they produce so much yeah. harvest. I'm trying to learn at home by doing like the chop and drop. I'm like, okay, all of these. Yep, chop I did and that drop with my carrots. The fertility directly to the soil, and so right. is composting. Mm hmm. Yes. What does it mean to stagger or relay plants? Stagger. I don't think I've heard that term before. That sounds like it's the same thing as succession plant. Okay. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I think don't that is. On that, but yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably just another term to describe. 
relay planting. I think that I'll actually might refer to something specific. Um, I think that's a, a way of like row. That might actually be a way of like row cropping, uh, where you plant one row. Uh, you plant rows of one crop, and then in between those rows, like at some later point, you'll plant rows of another crop. I think that might be what it is. I'm not sure though. Uh, row planting. There's so many different methods out there. There are tons. <laughs> There's no right or wrong way to plant. Yeah, I there guess. really isn't. You know, it just it just depends. You all there are is there's methods and then there's outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you focus on soil health and use regenerative methods, your outcome is a healthy system that doesn't require many inputs and that you know kind of takes care of itself. If you're using chemical fertilizers, then you're creating a system where you need to maintain it constantly. True. I like this more sustainable option. <laughs> yep. We use sustainable methods here. That's our whole deal. Yeah. Um, whether that's using organic fertilizers when we need to, or doing things like this with focusing on the soil biology and soil health. Mm -hmm. All right, this should be good. Um, if we don't have enough, then I'll just prepare some more seeds. Wonderful. And you should come up in a week or two. How long ago did you plant the other beans? Two weeks. Oh, these ones, th these were a week ago. Okay, so we should start seeing something next week? Yes. Do you think, okay, this is a question I have actually, because we know, you know, mulching things, so putting wood chips on top helps to retain moisture. Absolutely. But will that, like, so at home, I started seeds, but I didn't put any mulch yet because I just started in the little seed. I because I feel I don't know in my mind I think that the mulch is gonna like choke out the plant or like that's the right thinking. Really? Okay. Yeah, like uh, so. When how it comes come you to added mulch, mulch there? Beans are really have really big seeds and make really strong seedlings. So like if okay. you put a little bit of mulch, they can push through okay. So it but I tried like a size. two inch layer of mulch with radishes, and the radishes some of them came up, but they were really weak. They ended okay. up getting a fungal disease. Because uh, mulch can spread disease uh, if used improperly. Okay. Um, hmm. But with some with something like beans that uh, um, really big seeds, really strong seedlings, they should be able to come up through a little bit of mulch. Okay. I was through that same mulch that the radishes were not able to come up properly through. I was able to germinate. I was able to get potatoes, fava beans, and peas to come up successfully. Okay. Without any problems whatsoever. Yeah, because those are bigger seeds. It depends on the plant, depends on the, con depends on the context. Uh, Growing is just constant experimentation. You live and you learn. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I'm still learning. I have so much to learn. Yeah. I may sound like I know a lot. I know a decent bit, but I don't know that much. Um, okay, so this thing is awesome. Uh, this is a hose and sprayer. I love this uh, because they make applying worm tea so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're actually gonna do is we're going to water those in that we just planted, but with worm tea, with a solution of worm tea and hose water. I feel like we should also, or I could do it with the good old, uh, the regular um, container over there. You mean in the case, watering can? Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably do it with that in case someone doesn't have this contraption. Yeah, this is like $40, but it's <laughs> so easy to use. You just pretty much fill it up and screw it on. Turn on the hose, make sure you're using the dechlorinated water. And then... Beautiful. See how it's getting used up? I tried using another one from a different brand that was cheaper, mm -hmm. but it kept getting clogged. Uh, so for um, worm tea, I would use one like this. Okay. Because worm tea has particles in it. Worm tea, compost tea, same thing. Again, worm tea is just compost tea made with worm castings. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So you can make compost tea without worms. Yeah, if you just have regular compost. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is you just want to make sure that your, the quality of your, of your compost that you're using is as good as possible. Right. Um, 
uh, because the thing about compost is um, if you don't have good compost, if you have compost with like bad microbes in it that have that produce toxins, then it's going to have the opposite of the intended effect. It's going to hurt your plants to the culture. It's going to hurt your soil to the culture. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if you don't have good compost, don't even bother. Are you going to spray the whole bed or? Nope. That's where we planted. Uh, because if we were to spray the whole bed right now, in the heat of the afternoon, the plants could get burned. Hmm. The plants or the bacteria? The plants. Uh, because, um... Because the water on their leaves can magnify the sun and cause damage to the leaves. That is good to know. See, I wouldn't have known that. I would have been like, oh, let me spray the whole garden with it. Right? And speaking of, I think that the rest of this, uh, we should apply later when it's, I'll, I'll apply it later in the afternoon uh, when it's a bit uh, more shady so that we don't damage the plants. But this is like a demonstration, I guess. Mm hmm and so you could also spray this stuff on the leaves of, of plants and that'll protect them from uh, pathogenic fungi uh, and other diseases that attack the leaves. If you have a good product, of course. Those plants are actually supposed to have like good fungi and good bacteria on the leaves and this is what it does. It, it helps protect them. Might as well use the rest of this. Uh, but here, um, we can do the cover crops right there, yeah. so we can demonstrate how to do a foliar. Looks pretty shady over there. Yeah, it's nice and shady, uh, so I think this is fun. Um, and these guys can do some. What will I need for succession planting? Just a yeah. uh, question. What will I need for succession planting? Just your. Just just your seeds, your seeds. and you know your a plant, honestly. Uh, having a plan is important. Um, we use square foot gardening here, which makes it super easy. But you don't have to use square foot gardening. You can do it in rows. Yeah. So just like you know, have your seeds you want a succession plant or your seedlings, and just know how you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Don't just go gung ho. Like uh, planning <laughs> is one of the most important parts of gardening. I'm gonna go over here now. We're just gonna use the rest of this up. Okay. Look at these wonderful flowers. You see the bees swarming? This actually might be clogged now. Let's see. The other thing I like about this one is it's super easy to disassemble and check the clogs. I have so never fun. seen anyone put their mouth to a compost. <laughs> You're brave. See. I mean, I'm barely getting used to smelling you, compost. <laughs> if you have a good product, then it's good for you too. <laughs> it's good for your immune system. Your immune system. Oh yeah. Where do you think? Do you think gut... people could drink worm tea? I wouldn't, honestly, but it's good to get. I, I suppose it's good to get a little bit of it. And like, where do you think the gut microbiome comes from? It comes true. from the soil and the food that we eat and the microbes on the food we eat. Very true. That's like the new topic. People are just uh, yeah. We've we've been pretty exploring. concerned with this kind of stuff at the center, haven't we? We've mm -hmm. been talking about it a bit. Uh, yeah. And that's why we have a wellness garden, you know, because <laughs> when you grow your own food, it promotes wellness. And, yes. You know, we're the center of nutrition and dietetics, and when you grow your own food, it's the most nutritious. One of my favorite sayings is. Um, the best superfood in the, in the world is food you grow yourself. Oh, I love that. That is true. I feel like it brings, uh, at home, I get so much joy, like, seeing things. Yesterday, I just harvested a whole bunch of carrots with my sisters, and I just ate them as a snack, and it was wonderful. Oh, yeah. It is wonderful to really grow you your own You got some food. carrots, you said? Yeah, I harvested. What kind were they? Um... They were the, 
I don't they weren't the long ones or the round what ones. This one? They were just like regular. I don't remember. I wish I would see I don't pay attention to the names of them. I should. Yeah. I just look at the picture and I'm like, oh, let's grow these. Right. But what color were they? Orange. Oh, just orange ones. Okay. They were orange ones, yeah. Not rainbow carrots, but but I planted some uh, yellow watermelon, Ooh. and that's coming up, and red watermelon. We have Anaheim chili peppers, Yum. Um, cucumber, zucchini. Okay. Yum! All this, all the wonderful spring stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you excited to grow here at the Wellness Garden this year, Brianna? I think I'm excited, honestly, for the ginger and turmeric. I feel, because I, I don't even know what the plant looks like. I haven't even Googled a picture. So yeah. I'm I think excited I'm excited. Too. And especially because I've been buying, which are so expensive. And I'm like, okay, I need to just grow ginger and turmeric on my own. Like those wellness, like immunity shots. Yep. I've been just buying those here and there. And I'm like, I'd rather just juice it on my own. It's going to be like five should... times the nutritionally dense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because sometimes those shots they like they're you don't know if it's fresh and then exactly. they mix it with other stuff like lemon juice. Exactly. And they can so. Oh, you, you see, like when you buy a product, you know your best clue as to what's in it, you know, is, is the ingredient list and the mm -hmm. nutrition facts. Um, and uh, if you're buying something that's a supplement, they might not even need to have that. And uh, the supplement industry isn't very regulated at all. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why here at the Wellness Garden, we're trying to focus on growing our own superfoods and our own supplements and our own medicinal yes. plants. Um, you know what's another good one that I think we should uh, consider growing um, because it grows so quickly. I started growing it at home is wheatgrass because uh, I love taking wheatgrass shots. You can so. do it in containers, right? Yeah. We have plenty I of have to. Here. I need to bring, uh, well, I use all my seeds at home, but. You know what would actually be really good for it? Um, for wheatgrass, particularly. Uh huh. Um, right here. This pot. Uh, this is a fabric pot or an air pruning pot. Mm -hmm. And it actually allows more air into the soil. Um, and so mm. what happens is that the roots grow throughout the whole pot and the plants don't get root bound. And so if you're trying to grow something like wheatgrass, that's perfect for it. Um, okay. I'm actually going to be using pots like this uh, for something similar, where you grow a bunch of grass, but it's to collect biology. So. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought those were just like regular fabric bags. Oh, no. I didn't know they had a purpose behind them. They dry out more quickly. That's their drawback. Mm -hmm. um, but they will, like the plants that you grow in these should be healthier than plants you grow in something like that this that has you know solid sides that doesn't that don't what about work. a clay pot maybe we could try a clay pot kind of i'd say probably in between the two clay pots let some air in but not much oh look at this our onion is that a flowering yes i want to show i think that means it's time to harvest go, go ahead um I'll, I'll get this tool for the, for the top drop. look at that you guys should i try harvesting it or Okay. Yeah, looks like it's producing some type of. Oh, okay. Yes, let's do that. We harvested some sweet potatoes, but let's do the potatoes just to make this more exciting. Yeah, let's make this more exciting. You see, there's the one stem. These, these just these are volunteers. They came up on their own. Let's see any. Ooh, a small one. Oh, what a baby potato. Baby potato. <laughs> if we dig around a bit, we might find some more. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Potatoes are always so much fun. Great crop for the kids, too. Mm -hmm. um, we can compost oh. that. So um, that just came up on its own. Well, Is there another plant? Yeah, there's more. There's way more. They just, they just came up. Amazing. Look at that. I love growing potatoes. They're so much fun. Exciting. Yeah, baby potatoes. Look at that in the comments. Look at that. This I think this one's going to yield the most. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, here's another one. Ooh. 
yes, that is potato. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, okay. So how would we keep this like a continuous, um, keep it growing here? You gotta plant it again. And it is potatoes, it is, it, it is time to plant potatoes. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Wait, I think we have one here. Do we? Do we have a winner for the biggest one? So far this one is the uh, is, what kind of roots? What larger roots one from? here. Those don't look like potato roots. Maybe that was a carrot. Oh, small ones. Oof. <laughs> Look Careful. at that. This wow. is a small harvest, but a harvest nonetheless. Yeah. Um, we'll grow more potatoes in the fall. That can taste good with some. Uh, what do you like to eat with potatoes? Um, I like uh, oh, sorry. French fries, honestly. <laughs> French fries, those are like... I like roasted potatoes. Um, it's, it's really good to chop them up and just bake them in the oven with some olive oil. Yeah, those would taste good with some, yeah, olive oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic. Oh, we should cover this back up. I forgot to do that. Um, let's get the supplies for the chop and drop. Uh, we're going to need uh, something to put the, the plant residues in. Okay. So we can process it. We have a potato question. Yes. How long does it take to grow potatoes before they can be harvested? About 90 days, maybe a bit longer. 90 days. Okay. It depends on the variety. Uh, some are as long as 120 days. Mm. Uh, you want to harvest them uh, when, really when they start um, uh, yellowing. Like the leaves start yellowing, I think, is when you're supposed to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll use this. Um, I have another uh, shear over there please. as well. So I, yeah, I have um, some stuff. So now we're gonna chop and drop. Oh, can I grow transplants to put in a succession garden? Yeah, um, just make sure that what you're growing can be transplanted and transplants well. Beans cannot be transplanted well. Uh, you, with beans, you always want to direct sow them. Okay. A lot of legumes, that's the case. And root crops as well. And there was another question from earlier. Is yeah. there an optimal season to start succession planting? Um, that's actually a good question. Is there an optimal season to start succession planting? You can do it all year round. Uh, right. Whatever you as long as, as long as what you're growing is in season. As long as what you're growing is in season. Okay. I wonder if I could set this here and you could show. Probably show both of us yeah and can people see, we're gonna that's not gonna work <laughs> no huh it has to be angled down can um, see maybe through here yeah i don't think this will work rihanna unfortunately okay well i can use i do i'll do it one-handed here and then um you can do the big one so okay, that way we can yeah, i forgot my tripod we need to get one for the garden honestly just cut right. soil level some of these might come back then just cut them again um, we'll just put them in here for now, and then we'll kind of like... So we're taking out the nasturtiums too? Everything. Everything must go. Okay. And for those of you who are wondering why we're doing this, it is, uh... Well... You want to leave the roots in the soil. You want living roots in the soil for as long as possible. Yeah, and we're going to leave these for plants. We're going to break down the plants and let them... Uh, yeah. We're going to leave them here, I right? I think, you know, honestly, we could probably sell the cover crops next week and it'll be fine. As long as it doesn't get, like... I saw that we had some nights that were supposed to be in the high 30s. And for this warm season cover crop mix that I've selected, uh, we want the soil temperature to be consistently... 60 degrees um, and uh, it's definitely a bit on the cold side and the plant we are cutting off is the broccoli and uh, cauliflower and nasturtiums I'm gonna try not to step in the soil too much. but I'm after this we're gonna plant warm season cover crops and because this bed the reason why this bed didn't do well was because um, just the soil quality right there was not enough the soil's a bit exhausted. Yeah. Um, it needs uh, some, it's, it's, it's a nitrogen issue mainly. 
Uh, we have nitrogen deficiency in here, and, and, a, and a good cover crop will fix that. I'm not sure what this is. This is like some type that, of... That's marigold. No, no, not marigold. This one. Calendula. Oh, calendula. Oh, I love calendula. It's a purple-orange flower, right? Yes. We have some in bloom in another part of the garden. They're a really good plant to grow. You want me to film you doing it too? <laughs> uh, sure. You wanna, should I get the big shears yep. then? I did not dress for the weather. I thought it was going to be much colder. Yeah, it's good that we're getting warm weather because we need those warm season cover crops in soon. And we'll probably end up terminating them in the fall and maybe planting potatoes here. It would be cool to do potatoes, like a like potatoes, uh, peas, and fava beans. I found work really well together. Like a potato bed. Um, you can call it Mr. Potato Bed. And this bed looks so much bigger now that we're clearing it out. Yeah. I'll just cut this guy off. Yes, we do have lemon balm. It's dormant right now, kind of. Uh, it should come back in the spring. Well, that one just came out. It's like early spring. Weak root system. Yeah, it should come back soon. I'm pretty sure lemon balm goes dormant in the winter. And so we're just gonna save these. You could compost these too, but uh, I like chop and drop, honestly. It takes that extra step out and it ensures that all the nutrients get back to the soil. There goes Brianna. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm the one behind the camera most of the time. Yeah, um, once we get a tripod, I don't know what this is, but I'm taking it out. Uh, well, that came out. <laughs> Ooh, do we have mycorrhiza on here? No, doesn't look like it. I'm not sure if you can always see them. I took off this one. Yeah, and that that one right there is a sunflower. Uh, there are sunflowers included in the in the cover crop mix I selected. Oh, you want to cut these off closer to the ground than nasturtiums, otherwise they'll just come back. And so we'll we have a decent bit of wood chips in here. We're just going to. Uh, Move them aside after this. Can you get a rake? Yeah, if you could get a rake, that would be fantastic. Um, I kind of want to go a little bit lower than that. Jujube. Yes, succession planting works everywhere. Uh, provided you have um, a long enough growing season, and pretty much, unless you live in like Siberia, then yes. <laughs> And even then, like, radishes are a super short cycle, and you could succession plant those anywhere. Grass. The rake is not the best uh, quality. That's, that's a leaf rake. Um, we can try it and see how well it works. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Or are you good? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I feel like you have a better method than I do. I'm all right. <laughs> Here. Now we want to move those rocks out of the way too. Um, do you want to? Do you want to hold the camera? Yeah. Oh goodness, it's hot today. Hot, hot, hot. It um, is super hot. Uh, what kind of crops are good to plant in the summer? Um, did you a whole answer lot that? Of them. Yeah. Because um, I feel crops, like for uh, summer crops, you want to be planting now, right? Uh, starting. Yeah, you want to have your transplant started soon. Summer crops are mostly fruiting crops. Um, so like uh, tomatoes, eggplant, squash, cucumbers, corn, uh, beans. Um, some leafy crops like amaranth are summer crops. But 
And things that are not summer crops are like lettuce, peas, fava beans. Like legumes are kind of like, it depends on the species. Some of them are warm, some of them are cool. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have a really interesting mix in here. Um, it's uh, 24 species. Um, oh, really? Oh yeah. I might even add a couple more. Um, like some, a couple more edible stuff. Just so we can get, you know, get a little bit extra. We just okay. wanna make this a food forest here. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. We wanna have a lot of food to donate to the food pantry. Yep. Um, we should adjust. Oh man, the milkweed's coming up again. A non-native milkweed that we must eliminate. Does succession planting work in all agricultural zones and climates? Yeah, I, I would. That question. Oh, okay, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get some pomegranates growing yeah, soon. Going back, so. Um. How, okay. how many seeds can you put in one bed? <laughs> I feel like that's... Depends on the spacing required for right. whatever plant you're growing. I'm just going to clean this up. Yeah, a that's more. why whenever you're um, purchasing seeds or thinking of buying a plant, it's good to look at, look at like spacing. the information on the spacing, the, the make sure it's like it grows, what time of the year it grows best, and also what zone you are. So like we're zone 10A, I think. We are 10A. Yeah. Um, 10A is a great place to be. 10B is even better, <laughs> in my opinion. 10B? Where's 10B? Uh, like I'm um, uh, so south the of coast? San Fernando Valley, the coast. Oh. Some, uh, some areas of the coast near Santa Monica are actually 11A, which is almost tropical. Not quite. I've heard of people growing cacao in Santa Monica. Oh, wow. I'm honestly surprised that we can grow ginger and turmeric here. Like, oh, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Perfect. I thought that was only like in... Now it's time to start chopping these up. We want to get them nice and fine. If we run out of time, that's okay. You'll, you guys will just see the principle. I wish I had my clock with me. I don't know what time it is. Oh, actually, I do have my clock. It's 155. Yeah, and pretty much we want to let this rest for like a week or two. So this is putting nutrients back into the soil. Yep, all these nutrients soil. that the plants just took out are going back now. Chop and dry. Beautiful. And the finer you can get this stuff, the better. You know, we can only do so much with our hands in a timely manner, but... Just distribute it evenly um, and you'll see how we do it um, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna kind of cover this up with soil and let it break down um, then we'll sow the crops cover it with a little bit more soil and then and then put like just enough wood chips to cover it because uh, you don't want too many lots of little critters crawling around in there that's always a good sign if you see critters in your soil you're in good shape but if you see it in your plants? Depends on what it is. Kale? Depend, no, it depends on what the critter is. I had aphids on my kale, sadly. They were doing so well, and then... So then I sprayed some you soap. You don't have an aphid <laughs> problem. You have a ladybug deficiency. I know some people buy ladybugs, but I feel like that's a little... Well, yeah, I have done that. Uh, but apparently what really attracts ladybugs is artichokes. Oh. So maybe if you're having lots of aphid issues, you can grow some artichokes. Yep. Artichokes are perennial. Yes, I know it depends on the type, though. They have globe artichokes. Oh, we yeah, learned that's true. this. Learned this in Nara. We had a roasting roast an artichoke workshop recently, right. and I had to look about grow look up information on how to grow an artichoke. And there's two types. There is the globe one, and there's another one which I forgot the name. But, um, I'm not an artichoke expert. I just learned the other, literally yesterday, that they attract ladybugs like crazy. I had no idea. Should have one artichoke plant here. <laughs> I know that they flower. Once they flower, you can't really eat them anymore. Um, it starts to get very fibrous, and it just 
the texture changes. But, I'm just going to um, use my hands. It's faster at this point. Oh, look. There's a lot of ladybugs down there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's crawling. And lots of aphids here. These aphids are no longer going to have a food source. So, clearly, since we have an aphid problem, we have a ladybug deficiency. And so, we're going to need to plant some artichoke eventually. We can plant artichoke near the fruit trees, actually. Artichokes are like a good companion for fruit trees, it seems. I know they're also heavy feeders. So okay. it's so you it's recommended that you add compost to it frequently, like once a month. Okay. Or um, and mulch them so that way they don't get too, too dry. Yeah, too dry. Yeah, now that we chop and drop, we definitely want to let it rest a bit. These plants are going through so much trauma right now. Why are ladybugs attracted to artichokes? Do they eat them? Did you I learn? I don't know. I really don't know. That's just, just what I was told yesterday by one of my coworkers. And lo and behold, there was a ladybug on this artichoke. <laughs> right wow. On. In plain sight. So it is almost two o'clock, 1.59. Any last questions before we end this live? Yeah, and we're going to continue doing this uh, until it's done today. Yes. Probably going to get the shears and just, you could chop it in there too. Yeah, you can use the shears. I like to use my hands. I can be more accurate with my hands. Okay. It's two o'clock. Right. There's no other questions, but thank you so much for joining us today. We did a lot of fun stuff. Do. Those potatoes were the star of this today. Yeah, can't wait to harvest mine at home. Mine look really healthy. Exciting. I've been growing mine without fertilizer. See, you can do it. That's one thing I love about harvesting root vegetables. It's like you can't see what's beneath the ground, so you just kind of pull it up and it's a surprise for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you everyone Thank for you. coming. Stay tuned on our Instagram for all the different flyers for different events happening. Um, yeah. And also we have our Ask a Master Gardener feature where you can uh, put different questions specific to your garden and someone who's well knowledgeable will be able to answer that for you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, there's going to be a live on Tuesday with uh, dietitians in the garden, I believe. But yeah, that's on Tuesday at 1030. So stay tuned for details for that event. And we will see you next week. Bye.